So thanks for being here. Happy you're here. And I thought we could start out, we'd started this in the Move Create Practice Facebook group, this brainstorm around this word unwind or unwinding. So if you're here on YouTube or in the Facebook group, if you would just put a word in the chat, what comes to mind when you think of unwind? And while you're doing that, I'll just say, you know, there's this kind of funny thing where like if you talk about, if you put the word anxiety in the space, it's kind of like evocative, right, of anxiety, which is kind of beside, it's like the opposite of what we're wanting. And also if you think of neck and shoulders and freeing your neck and shoulders, that can also do this thing where then you bring your attention to your neck and shoulders and you realize how they aren't free. So there is this paradox around, around having something in the foreground that is quote unquote a problem, which in the Feldenkrais method and also in organic intelligence practice, we see that focusing on the problem is actually the problem or part of the problem. And that Feldenkrais would say focusing on, if you focus on the problem, then you have the, a problem for life. So we have this paradox because we want to explore these pieces, these threads, and yet if we focus too directly on them, it actually can increase the difficulty. So let's see what you wrote for your unwind, our unwind brainstorm. Release, decompress, relaxation, spiral, unspiral. Ooh, I like those <laughs> right next to each other reorganize, release. I like those next to each other. Freeing. Mm -hmm. So what we'll do is a lesson, a mini lesson on the floor, and we'll talk, I'll talk more as we go through, but I want to get us, get us going. So what you will need for this lesson is perhaps something for under your head when lying on your side. This can be done on a bed if you don't want to lie on the floor. If you lie on the floor, have some kind of padding underneath you. And if you are not comfortable lying on your side, you can do this in a chair. So grab that stuff if you need it. And then we'll go ahead and get started. And we will start in standing. So gather what you need and also then make your way to stand. And I recommend taking your eyes off the screen if they are on the screen. And take a look at what you're looking at. So without imposing uh, correcting. So this is also the interesting piece is that we're not going to correct or fix the anxiety or the neck and shoulders, but we're going to have an exploration that actually widens our view and expands our capacity through ease and pleasure. So if anything that we do is at all uncomfortable or uneasy or anything in the opposite of these things that you wrote down. See what you can do yourself to modify, to adapt, to ignore the suggestions until you land on ones that feel good. So as you're standing, just notice what standing feels like. Again, without any sense of correcting or even judging or evaluating, just curiosity. Like, oh, this is how I'm standing right now. And how much of your attention would you say is inside of yourself? And how much of your attention is aware of your environment? You know, you could think of like a percentage or just kind of like most of my attention is here or not so much here. And then notice where you're looking, if you're looking down or to the right or to the left, up. Uh, the direction of your gaze and also what you see there. And then get a sense of anything about 
your upright posture right now, your sense of your shoulders, your back, it's generally how you are feeling standing. And then go ahead and come onto the floor and lie on your back. And if you're just coming on now, you can also do this on a bed if you don't want to do this on the floor, or you can adapt this for sitting if you don't want to be on the floor or a bed. And take a moment to sense what it's like to be horizontal. And just arrange yourself on the floor in a way that's comfortable for you, either with your legs long or your knees bent. And as you're lying here for the, for the moment, have your eyes open and notice the direction of your gaze in lying down. And is it the same as what you noticed when you were standing or is it a little different or a lot different in terms of whether it feels like you're looking a little more left or right or up or down or diagonal? And also how much of your attention is inside of yourself and how much of your environment are you able to take in right now? And then do a small, gentle movement of rolling your head a little bit from one side to the other, just delicately, gently, really listening to what is easy for now. Notice if you sense any differences between rolling your head to the right or to the left. And then check in for a moment just with your emotional state, where you're at right now in the beginning of this exploration. It could be in words or more, maybe more just sensation, feeling, just checking in overall. And then go ahead and roll on to one of your sides. You can choose which side. And if you'd like to put a little pillow or folded towel or folded something under your head to make you comfortable on your side, then go ahead and do that. You can choose which side. And when if you get over to one side and you're actually like, I'm not really comfortable on this side, then roll to your other side. <clears throat> So in this lesson, we'll be exploring some elements that are universal to all of us. And then there will also be aspects of those elements that are unique to you and your individual patterns. We'll explore both. So let's begin with a word. I'm going to say this word and then you notice what happens when you sense into your response to the word. So the word is small. And just notice if you have any, any bodily sensations or it could be an image when you think of the word small and then let that go. And also on your side, you're in a different orientation to gravity, right? So notice where you're looking with your eyes, what you see here being on your side, what it's like to be on your side. And then we're going to explore this word a little bit more. And you can play with it with your eyes open or with your eyes closed. So you can go back and forth or you can choose one. So now again, think of the word small and just notice where small takes shape in yourself, where the beginning of small uh, starts to mobilize or organize without any big movement. So just the very beginning of the muscular organization around this idea of small. And then let that go. And notice what lets go when you let go. 
You might notice your breathing changes or something in your abdomen or it could be jaw, could be hands. There could be many places where this small could kind of constellate for you. And now we'll play with it again. So think of small and then in the letting go of the small, think of tall. So go back and forth and play with this in your own timing to think of small, which could include movement, or it could include just the beginning of the initiation of the sensation of small. And then in the letting go of the small, imagine tall and just notice what happens and where you feel a shift, where you feel a change. And notice when you feel ready to go back to the small. If you have your eyes open, you could notice if there's any movement of your eyes. Or if your eyes are closed, you might notice that too. So taking all the time that you would like with this, and of course, rest anytime you feel done with this. Okay, and then pause for a moment. Just rest on your side and notice your breathing and where you feel your breath moves. And now bring your attention to your pelvis and think of your tailbone, the very, very bottom of your pelvis, the middle, the bottom of your pelvis where your tailbone is, and begin to do a tiny movement of your pelvis as if you were tucking your tail. So like a dog who gets scared, there's this, could be a big tucking of the tail, but we just want to look for a little the very, very beginning of that movement of tucking your tail and then let that go. And notice when you do this movement and super gently, what happens? What happens in your breathing, in your abdomen? What do you sense in your spine, your legs? So you do the movement a little bit tucking your tail and then let go of that movement. Any discomfort, do less. You can even imagine tucking your tail. Okay, maybe one more time. And this time, coordinate it with your exhalation. So intentionally, as the air comes out, you invite this movement of tilting your pelvis in the direction of rounding your lower back a little bit and then let that go and just rest on your side and notice what you're aware of And now bring your attention to the middle of your back. So for everyone, this is gonna be super subjective and think that you're going to take the middle of your back backwards. And so you just play with that idea that you begin to find some place in your back that could move backwards a little bit and then you let that go. It's as if you had a wall behind you, you wanted to touch with your back, or you could imagine um, if someone had their hand there that you wanted to increase the pressure into their hand a little bit. And just notice where, which part of your spine most easily, most readily is willing to, to go there. And then you let that go and notice when you let go, what lets go. And then again, the middle of your back somewhere, or maybe it changes a little bit exactly where you do it and begin to spread your attention to notice 
what you sense happens to your pelvis, maybe in response or your breathing or your abdomen, and then you let that go. So if you think of this pattern of this beginning of rounding the back is in a way it's bringing you into a smaller shape, yeah? Curling you up a little bit more on your side, but just a little bit, just a little tiny bit. And then in the letting go, what happens in the letting go of that? Taking your time to rest in between the movements, to think of it, initiate it, not pushing, no straining, just this little bit of back backwards. And then let that go and rest on your side. The rests I'm giving you for this little part section is uh, on your side, but if you need to go on your back or go into a different position, then do that. Okay, and now your head. So a movement now, move your head the slightest bit forward and down as if you wanted to see in the direction of your feet. So a little bit, take your head down and notice what the response is in the rest of yourself. So the, the movements are small so that you can really feel how you organize the movement, where this movement of taking your head forward and down, where it actually starts, how you personally, individually, uniquely do this movement, because we'll each have our own particular timing, direction, what's involved. And then in the letting go, what lets go? And are you able to start to sense the this shaping of yourself that includes your pelvis, your spine, and this folding gently on your side, taking your time with the movement there and taking your time with the unfurling, the undoing, the returning. Okay, and now let's intentionally do everything together. So your head, your pelvis, tail tucking, and the middle of your back backwards. So this intentionally bringing in these three places, spreading your attention, spreading the movement in this folding yourself on your side, and then the unfolding. And notice how you're sensing this, what happens to your breathing, what happens to your abdomen, your chest. What happens to your shoulders as you do this movement? And then rest on your side. So often when we're in the world, up and about, if there's some kind of experience that happens where we have an unconscious or conscious feeling like we need to protect ourselves, there'll be some kind of contraction of the abdomen, the muscles in the front of the body to, to protect our organs, to protect ourselves, yeah? But we don't really take the head, our heads down unless we're looking at our phones or computers. If you're like up in the world, you need to see where you're going, right? So open your eyes and just have your eyes facing forward. So your head is oriented forward. You're lying on your side. And do this pattern again of tucking your tail, 
contracting your abdomen a little bit, rounding your back, but don't take your head down. So you keep your head forward and notice what happens to your neck, your shoulders, and then let that go. Do this a couple times, just what's easy, this sense of as if you were going to round your whole back, but you keep your head oriented forward and you can see what's in front of you with your eyes open. There's something right in front of you, but there's this little mini contraction. Make it small. Make it so that if somebody was walking in the room, they wouldn't be able to see you doing it. So there's this like a little protective, yeah, but I'm keeping my head forward. Okay, one more variation is say you're someone who really likes to keep your shoulders back. Maybe you've been told to do that. So keep your head forward, keep your shoulders back, but then find this protective pattern in your abdomen, somewhere in your back, your pelvis. Oh, you can hear it. My voice is like, oh, <laughs> okay. What do that one more time and notice what happens in your jaw and in your neck when you keep your head and shoulders still, but you have this tucking of your tail, contracting of your abdomen, lower back rounding. Okay. Now just a couple times, take everything together, your head down, your back rounds, your tail tucks. So there's this cohesive pattern. Notice what that feels like. Good. And stay on your side, rest for a moment. Notice your breathing. And let's add one more piece to this, which is to flex your foot, the foot that's facing towards the ceiling, you bend your ankle so that your toes come a little bit towards your shin and then let that go. And notice when you make this small movement with your foot, is there a response in your pelvis? Is there a response in your spine? First, just notice if there is or not. And then just add in a little bit of this rounding of your back, tucking your tail with the flexing of your foot. So everything curls up together and then let that go. One more time, everything with the foot and the rounding and everything. And then notice in the letting go, when you let go of your foot and your belly and the rest of yourself, how are you lying on your side? And think again of this idea of small. How does small now express itself in your sensation or your imagery or a little bit of movement? What does small feel like? And then go into tall and what does that feel like? And go back and forth just in your own timing. Small, tall. And then can you think of small and tall at the same time? And maybe yes, maybe no. What happens when you do? Open your eyes, notice what you see. Can you think of small and tall while having your eyes open and be aware of your environment so that you have this choice you could get small, you could get tall. All right, roll onto your back and lie on your back and rest on your back. And notice what you're aware of. In your feeling, in your sensing, the differences between the sides, where you're looking with your eyes. And a little bit, roll your head from one side to the other. Are you aware of any difference there? Good. 
and then slowly roll over to your other side. We will be here for not as long as we were for the first side. Your first side will teach your other side. In a way, you have been moving both sides, even though you're on one side, but we'll give some time over here on this other side. First, just get comfortable. Notice where you're looking with your eyes. And let's actually reverse how we did it on the other side. So in the other side, we started with the pieces and then added them together. Let's start with the whole. So you can think your foot, bending your top foot. So you bend your ankle, flex your ankle, tilt your pelvis, round your back, take your head down. Play with this global movement of getting smaller. And notice the different parts of you, how they participate, where there's ease, where there's less ease. And can you have the movement be spread in such a way that no one place is doing more of the work, that it's an even distribution of effort. And then you could begin to highlight or emphasize some of the places that maybe you emphasize more of your pelvis, exaggerating a little bit more of this tucking of your tail. or you think of the middle of your back or some different places in your spine folding. And then notice what you do with your head and your chin and your eyes in the pattern. And can you have a few movements where you keep your head and your eyes forward and so you feel that the the folding is happening below and what happens in your neck when you do that and your shoulders. And then if you bring the movement of your head actively in, how does that change things? And then see if you can make the movement smaller and smaller doing less and less so that you feel the, the pattern is there, but little by little you're moving less so that you can actually sense this pattern of this folding movement without moving very much. Until it's just a thought. And then as you let go of the thought, notice what happens. And then you could shift back and forth between this idea of small and tall. Just taking your time with that. Sometimes maybe spending a little longer with one or the other, noticing the transition between the small and the tall, between the tall and the small. Okay. And then can you think of them at the same time, the small and tall at the same time? What happens when you do that? All right, go ahead and roll onto your back. Notice what you sense now, what you feel now, what you see now. A little bit roll your head from one side to the other. So we didn't get so much into the neck and shoulders stuff today as we will in the series. But as you can see, our necks and shoulders are not 
separated from the whole of us. So the approach we'll take is to zoom in and out. And what is the relationship between our necks and our shoulders and our gaze and our feeling and our thinking and our sensing and our whole selves? So where are you looking? How much of your environment are you aware of? How much of yourself are you aware of? Checking in again with that sense of your percentage or distribution of your attention. And then shift and roll to one side and come to sit and come to stand. And take some time in standing to notice what you feel, how you sense yourself in standing and being upright, what this whole container, this whole area of your torso that we've been playing with on the floor, how you feel the front of yourself, the back of yourself, where you're looking with your eyes, your feeling of your awareness of your environment of you, and yourself in the environment that you're in. And walk around a little bit. Notice what you feel. And if you feel moved to share a little bit in the comments, what you're noticing, what you noticed during the lesson, how you're feeling now, and also any questions that you have about this lesson or about kind of where we're going with all this. And this Wednesday, we'll do a full length lesson, so an hour long experience on Zoom. So we'll have like a different level of intimacy than the Facebook Live, YouTube Live thing. And we'll be playing with this unwinding the body pattern of anxiety, but in a different way, in a different orientation to gravity. We'll be on our backs for that one, although it can be adapted to a chair. And I think the link should be below somewhere. And then also the six-week series that I have coming up that starts August 11th. I should put the the link to that somewhere, but it's movementandcreativity.com backslash unwind. You can read the details and we'll be, there'll be six lessons on Zoom. You can get the recordings of those. And then there'll be um, a series of mini lessons that you'll get to support you in between the longer lessons. And also I'm going to have a few guest teachers presenting in the series. So Eleanor Silverstein, who is a Feldenkrais teacher and who I first learned about the vagus nerve from years and years ago. And she has really studied polyvagal theory. And I've been asking her for years to do something together. So she's going to do a workshop part of it. And also Steve Hoskinson, who's the founder of Organic Intelligence, is going to teach uh, a workshop on the orienting architecture, which is this what he, he calls orienting architecture is our, the architecture of our head, necks, shoulders to be able to, to be in the world, be, feel safe in the world and be connected to our environment. We, this is like our basic survival. We need to be able to turn around to see who's coming this way. And this flexor contraction in the front of the body that we've been playing with, you can feel if you're sitting now that if you can tuck your tail and contract the front of yourself and you try to turn your neck, there's not going to be much sense of freedom there. And unconsciously, if you cannot freely turn around yourself, your system knows that actually you're more in danger, right? You, It's not so safe for me to, to turn. So, so by unwinding this body pattern of anxiety is what I'm calling it in Feldenkrais writes about it like that, and I'll be, you know, going into more detail with it, that by freeing this up, we didn't work directly with the neck and shoulders today, and we will more in the series, but this is like the first step, because as long as this is contracted, you can't see me fully, but as long as this is contracted, then I cannot have a free head and neck.
I cannot. Um, that being said, if you have, you know, some surgeries and difficulties and structural things, you can always work around the limitations, right? If there's something that keeps you like this that you cannot, there can always be some improvement of the whole to create greater freedom. Okay, I'm enjoying seeing some of the comments, so much freer. Uh, lovely lesson, delicate and profound, greater ease, more peripheral awareness, more fully embodied. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you. And if you are watching the recording and you have comments or questions that you want to add, and I will look at them later. And I uh, hope to see you on Zoom on Wednesday. If you can't make it live, uh, if you sign up, you'll you'll be able to see the recording. And also, um, yeah, next Monday, I'm going to do another mini lesson, kind of focus more on the neck and shoulder aspect of this whole thing, too. Interesting. I love the idea of responding to words. Afterwards, noticed my eyes orienting to the environment in a different way, found myself looking above and below in addition to the horizon much more than before. Awesome. There was a clear increased awareness to my dimensional depth, especially forward and back. Increased visual depth was profound. Awesome. Clarification on the communication between head, chest, and pelvis. Awesome. Can you speak on how many lessons in the series will be on the back? That's a good question. I haven't sorted them all out yet, but there'll be a mixture of being on the back, the side, the belly, and sitting in a chair. Um, and so, yeah. Oh, somebody's saying it actually helped my neck. Awesome. I'm not seeing your names because of the thing I'm using. It doesn't show me who, who said it, but I'll be able to see later. Awesome. So glad I helped your neck. Yes. Yes. Yay. Yes. Yay is yes. Yes. Yay. Awesome. Thank you. That was fun. And uh, I always enjoy teaching because I get to learn at the same time and I get the benefit of prepping the lessons, which is good for me. So I'm looking forward to more and um, see you Wednesday or next Monday. Thank you. Thank you. And share with friends if you have friends who would benefit. Have a beautiful day.